You know what they call a guy who pays that much attention to his clothes, don't you? Mm-hmm. A grown-up. original rock star, Oscar Wilde, once said that fashion is a form of ugliness so intolerable that we have to alter it every six months. Popular music and fashion have worked hand in glove with increasing levels of intimacy over the last 120 years to further one another's cause. But fashion and style, which we're talking about here, are two different things. Think of style as how an individual subsumes fashion and incorporates it into a personal statement. We can all wear fashion, but only you can wear style. That said, certain artists have been known for their own individual approach to style with consistent elements across their career and a fine regard for what are known as the rules of style. Yes, style has rules as opposed to fashion which does not. And deliberate and intelligent choices are when to break them. And amongst these, some artists have elevated this ability in unique and curious ways. And these are our subjects today. A few explanations before I start. This list is really heavy on post-World War II figures, simply because a lot of what musicians wore back in the 40s, 30s and 20s was more a uniform than any statement of style. There are notable exceptions, Billy Eckstein, whom it pained me not to add to this list, and Duke Ellington were always impeccably stylish, although in very different styles. Also, I'm not looking at artists who are always dressing according to fashion without having a distinct personal style they can revert to. Also, I'm a suit guy, so I'm a little biased towards a chap in a well-made suit, although I freely acknowledge it is possible to be very stylish and never wear a suit. And to me, street style is just fast fashion under another name. So, grab a plate of biscuits and a cool beverage, and enjoy my take on the 20 most stylish musicians of the classical canon. 20. From eternally youthful thrift shop chic, to suiting which displays an innate knowledge of what the Italians call spizzato, Beck has managed to keep a fresh but classically based look going for 20 years and kept it eternally hip without ever looking like a hipster. he misses and goes much more into costuming as much as he hits with classic style choices, when Andre 3000 hits, he hits big with a sense of the debonair and a boldness that mark him out as a natural born risk taker. There is a sense of joy in his style that goes far beyond vapid peacockery and into a man who feels that dressing and dressing well should be an adventure. 18. Retro is very, very hard to pull off without looking like a hipster or a dimwit. But Bruno Mars does it with great care and utterly without the muddied irony that young men who go this path so frequently ooze. He understands three cardinal rules of correct style that we would all do well to remember. 1. Buy nice or buy twice. 2. You'll never get rich by dressing poorly. And three, fit is king. Seventeen. 
Phil Evans eschewed ostentation in his music. Every line was clean, nothing that needed not to be played got played. His dress style was much the same, played down and augmented only by the merest of artifice, the trademark glasses and the ever-present cigarette dangling from his lips. The image of the gaunt, impeccable figure of Evans, Jazz's doomed prince, is of a man who knew that in style, as in music, there was a place for everything and everything should be in its place. Sixteen. The owner of very possibly the most magnificent head of hair in popular music, Nick Lowe has, over the last 40 years, carried with him the secret of how to dress his age. While his wit and his impeccable ear still serve his music faithfully, his relaxed yet purposeful outfits much more become a man easing into life as an acerbic elder statesman of Britpop. They say Leonard Cohen lived in his suit. Serge Gainsbourg looked as though he slept in his. The epitome for French insouciance. Gainsbourg said of himself that in his dress he knew his limitations, which was why he could go beyond them. Deconstructed suit ensembles, sockless loafers, ties loose with studied precision, peloton overcoats, Breitling Navitimer. Inimitable. Fourteen. Always impeccably put together, Prince Buster was the inspiration of a fashion movement which still reverberates today. In reality, his dry, witty and clever style merely reflect his own good humour and intelligence, and pack the same punch as is nowadays wildly politically incorrect musical homilies did in the 1960s. A man with not only a sense of style but of grace, Brian Epstein always maintained an immaculate balance between classical style and fashion. His look evolved as his sharp eye for style took in more and more of the circle of musicians and beautiful people he travelled in as his all too short life went on. He always styled himself as a man slightly out of his time but always of it, a tricky balancing act but one at which he excelled. Much is made of Marvin Gaye's volatile and ever-changing nature, and his sense of style was just as volatile, evolving from being the sharpest dresser at Motown, being the most handsome man at Motown may have assisted in that regard, through his funkier incarnation in the early 70s, to the disco king at the end of the decade. Every step he made style look easy, he made singing look effortless but he made living just look so damn hard. Eleven. Play drums in a suit? Sure. Play some of the most influential drumming in the history of jazz in a suit? Yep. Play said drums in a suit so sharp its own shadow could cut you? That's Art Blakey. One of the greatest, if not the greatest, band leaders of post-war jazz, a freedom rider, louder than life, Blakey didn't need to hide behind his suit, which is why he always wore it with such elan.
pen. I bloody adore Jarvis Cocker. Best British songwriter since Elvis Costello, a thorough curmudgeon when he puts his mind to it, and a man who knows how to put together an outfit by getting little things to do the work for him. Favouring our rumpled, tweedy aesthetic, he manages, like others on this list, to get the look working for him, while so many others who didn't make the list just try weakly and fall into either irony or pale imitation. And who's this tailor? His fit is just immaculate. Nine. Thelonious Monk defined Hepcat style in the early 50s, not as madcap as Dizzy Gillespie, but far less classical than, say, Duke Ellington. As he grew older, he started to invent a looser, more eclectic look that always managed to be the definition of what where it was at was at. He was daring but tasteful, and he knew that pushing the boundaries with an outfit was never about excess. It was all about the point that you were prepared to discipline yourself to. Eight. The scion of prosperous Montreal clothiers, Leonard Cohen was, as he says, born wearing a suit. On his last album, he described himself as a lazy bastard living in a suit. The suit defined him somehow, but he looked as elegant in Buddhist robes, a leather jacket, a sweater and an Oxford shirt or an IDF field jacket. Some guys just have style. And Cohen knew how to wear a hat like no one since Sinatra. Punk was always, from the British end at least, as much if not more a fashion movement as a musical one. And while fashion came thick and fast to the point of parody across the few years that punk remained afloat, Clash bassist Paul Simonon, with his training in visual arts, was putting together some basic rules of style for punk, an aesthetic which made his look as distinctive and solid as his trademark ragged reggae bass riffs. He's carried it on now as almost a form of survivor chic. X. People usually put Keith Richards on lists like this, but Charlie Watts is the truly stylish stone. Keith used to look cool, but Charlie always looks classy. He's got a confidence that isn't afraid to introduce a little rock and roll edge into classic looks, or some zoot suit flair to more formal leanings. And he always looks 100% correct and put together. He also taught me a valuable lesson. Never cut the lower pockets of your suit jacket open. Then you won't be tempted to put anything in them and ruin the drape of the jacket. A lazy journalist once trotted out the old line about the chameleon of rock to David Bowie, who answered that a chameleon spent most of its energy trying to look exactly the same as its background, which was most certainly not Bowie's style. Plenty of musicians have great eye for clothes and great taste in arranging ensembles, but very few have as clear a vision of how to live in them as Bowie did. He almost uniquely knew how clothes should move, should shape him, and should project his vision. Paul. Another guy who, like Frank Sinatra, had the instinctive ability to put it together. Whereas Frank's style was every man done absolutely right, Miles Davis increasingly liked to push into the eccentric. But he had a great eye for clothes, 
avoided the ephemeral and trendy and for the most part retained strong roots to the classical elements of his style. Later in his career, he got into wilder, brighter patterns, but he designed them so fair play to him. Face it, fellas, when it comes to the style game, it's Sinatra's world and we just get to play in it. Well, up to a point. He'd be number one, no doubt, if this list ended at, say, 1968. But the tuxedo years, as we'll call them, weren't kind to Frank. I dislike the tuxedo. I think it's a prop, a costume, and Sinatra wore it because he felt, rightly or wrongly, that it was the image that best served him in his declining years. Me? I'd rather he still dress like Frank Sinatra and not like his own tribute act. Two. A man who for over 60 years understood the value of understatement in a business where, as Oscar Wilde once said, nothing succeeds like excess. Armit Erdogan was the very definition of the dapper gent who showed us a style to aspire to. Unpretentious, tidy, and eternally with it. Just look at the picture. It takes a rarely perfect world in which polka dots and stripes can live together like that. Brian Ferry can do with a Midnight Blue Anderson and Shepherd suit what James Bond can do with a wall for PPK. The master of sprezzatura, Ferry makes any outfit he wears look effortless, and he makes any look he takes on look natural on him. The navy silk suit, the knitted tie, George Cleverly shoes and the Amiga Constellation worn inside out. All iconic, but what his clothes really do is round the art of simply being Brian Ferry. And to round oneself in such a fashion is a major component of the art of living. And because of the precision and the class with which he does it, that's why Brian Ferry is, in my opinion, the most stylish man in the classic canon. Guten Morgen, meine Freunde. Wie geht es Ihnen? I certainly hope you found today's presentation to be interesting and that it piqued your curiosity. The obvious question is, whom did we leave from our list of sharp-dressed men about whom I am reliably informed all the girls are crazy? I would value your comments or thoughts below. However, until the next time we gather together in good company, or until the nasty YouTube police shut the channel down, you keep listening to the good stuff, and you stay righteous. Shame there is no money in this jazz stuff, because it really is a dollar.